If you're installing Windows Server 2019 on a physical server, one of the first concerns you have is making sure the hardware in your server is sufficient to run the operating system, all the applications you intend to run on it. Now, something that we're not really able to do is say, you need this much memory, you need this processor, you need this much hard drive space, because that depends on what you're gonna do with the server. If I'm gonna have a server that runs a database, and I'm gonna have another server that is just a file server and users just connect to it to read PDF files or Word documents, those two servers will have drastically different hardware requirements. So it truly depends on the function of the server. What we have here is the minimum requirements that Microsoft actually list. So if you are somehow below this, uh, you would not even install the operating system. Now, some of these are basically assumed knowledge, really. Processor architecture, 64-bit. There is no 32-bit server operating system. Uh, now, most operating systems you encounter, even if it's a Windows 10 operating system, today, most environments would deploy 64-bit. So if you have a client OS like Windows 10, you can get a 32-bit or you can get a 64-bit. Server operating systems since 2008 R2 server only come in 64-bit. So that is really just a foregone conclusion, has to have a 64-bit processor. The speed of the processor at a minimum 1.4 gigahertz. Now most processors are gonna far exceed that, so that is normally not a concern. Only time that would be a concern is if you have an old server and you're gonna repurpose it and you wanna put server 2019 on it, but it would have to be an extremely old server. For RAM, now this one is very interesting. 512 megabytes. This is the minimum amount of RAM to install the operating system. Less than this, you can't install the operating system. No one would build a server that has 512 megs or we'll say half a gig of RAM. That's gonna be incredibly slow the moment you power it up. So that is a true minimum for the operating system to run, not a number that we would deploy. Normally, if you're going to deploy the operating system, four gigabytes or more. Now, usually you want much more, but if you have four gigabytes of RAM, I mean, the server itself will run okay if it's, if it's just running very basic features. But 512 megs, not something we would really do. Now, the reason that 512 number is important, we look at virtualization a little more in the course, but... When I start building virtual machines, with virtual machines, you define a minimum and a maximum amount of memory that a virtual machine can use. The minimum amount of RAM that a virtual machine uses is actually 512 megabytes. Now, you can set the max to be whatever you want. So I'm going to say, I don't know, 16 gigs. We'll say that's my max. My virtual machine just increases and decreases the amount of memory it's using, never to drop below 512. We'll see that when we look at virtualization and we go through this Hyper-V roll. So that is just interesting to know, but not something you would really ever implement. We also have hard drive space. At a minimum, 32 gigabytes of hard drive space. Now, that itself is not a huge concern, mainly because... The hard drive you buy, it's not going to be 32 gigs. Hard drives you would put in a server, we're typically going to be at a terabyte or greater than a terabyte because the cost of these drives has came down so much. So that's just a fact. At a minimum, we need 32 gigs of space. Now, some things that do concern people uh, related to this number that does not mean the operating system is 32 gigs in size. When you install the operating system, the OS itself uses just above 10 gigs. So most of this 32 gigs is actually for future growth. Because they know we're going to install uh, updates. We're going to load applications. I'm going to load other roles and features on the server itself. So that's really future growth. Now, if you were to think back all the way to Windows Server 2003 and Windows XP, Microsoft, way back then, they made this mistake of saying back then, for like Server 2003 and XP, they said, oh, you only need two gigabytes of space. Uh, if you use that, 
somehow you had a two gigabyte partition or drive, you would discover that you could not install the service pack. On the client side, you couldn't even install Microsoft Office. So what they did, instead of giving these true numbers to say this is the minimum amount of space, they increased it enough to account for the applications and things like that you would install. So not consuming that much on disk. Now, when you go through these numbers, you're kind of left to your own devices to determine how much you really need. Because depending on the role, uh, if you want this to be file server, a database server, an email server, something like that, that's going to affect the resources you need. And we can't say how many resources you need because it depends on your environment. If I have a server and I know this server is server 2019, but it's going to run Microsoft's SQL server. But my company only has 40 users. So no more than 40 users connect to this. Another company has a 2019 server that also runs SQL. This company has, we'll say 4,000 users. So we're gonna have much more than 40 users connect to this at one time, potentially hundreds or thousands of users at one time, then naturally this server is gonna require many more resources than this one here. So there's not a number or a document you could read that would directly say, these are the resources you need. At most, you could go to the Microsoft site and they would give you estimates. So they would say, oh, if you have a SQL server and you have one to a thousand, if you have a thousand to five thousand, these are the recommended resources. So it just depends, ultimately, is the right answer to that.